We got a great show. I am here in LA. The sunshine isn't uh, is nowhere to be found, but guess what? The U.S. Open is. There's signs everywhere. We're very excited. We have Will Zelatoris. He's a young rising star in the PGA Tour world, and he will be here to sort of break all of that down. I mean, we'll talk a little live. We'll talk a little PGA. We'll get to some U.S. Open stuff as well. Also, go Nugs. We see you. We salute you. We celebrate you. We've got that going on. And DeAndre Hopkins' watch still happening? Yeah. Hammer watches, and he's in studio. Let's go. That's, that's what happens, and that's where we start the show. There's no other way to start the show other than congratulating the Denver Nuggets and, and the, their biggest fan, Matthew Hamilton, who came all across, the way across the country. Not to see me, I'm sure. I don't quite know what you're doing here. Maybe you're here to escape the, uh, weirdly escape the pollution <laughs> in New York, so you came over to clean and crispy gloom June L.A. Yeah, who would have thought L.A. Um, would be the place to go to get some fresh air? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing here? I don't know. Came out for the last couple of days. Who knows? I love it. Well, we're going on a bit of a vacation. Uh, not together, of course, but all going our separate ways. Uh, yeah. After Thursday show. So we're going to be gone for a little bit. We have a lot to get to. We're going to have fun shows until then. I don't really know where to look because you're right here. <laughs> Can we do that again? You're right here, but you're looking there. But I'm looking here. I'm in my pajamas yeah. today. There's a, lot, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. We're starting with the Nugs. You and I watched the yeah. game, and it was, not, again, not together, but we watched the game. And listen, this has been a long time coming. I talk about Kroenke on the show all the time. I worked for him in St. Louis. One of, my, one of the first people to ever give me a paycheck was Stan Kroenke. And I used to serve drinks to Josh Kroenke at Willie's Pub and Pool in Columbia, Missouri. And here we are, 47 years, not later, but 47 years of Nuggets dumb. And they finally capture their first NBA title. It's awesome. And so is Jokic. I mean, just awesome. His post-game interview... People want to say it wasn't great, it wasn't. It was iconic. This is an icon, and you couldn't tell that he was even excited by the way he was talking to Emmy Award winner, the amazing Lisa Salters. Uh, like, did it, you just win an NBA championship game, or are you Ivan Drago? Tell, like, what, what's going on? Let's take that. Do we have the clip of it? No. Yeah. Let's take a listen. You are an NBA champion, Nicola. How does that feel? It's good. It's good. When the job is done, we can go home now. <laughs> so Hamilton texts me and says, this this is ridiculous. And the whole world is like, what is this? This is your post game? Like, this is your, you just won this thing? What? And I just said, Eastern European, man. <laughs> I'm Eastern European. This is just what it is. You don't, you don't, you don't celebrate. You're even keel. You're like this. So, uh, by the way, Eastern European, I mean, Djokovic, you got Jokic, you got Iga Świątek, the Polish tennis sensation, all doing their thing. So, uh I mean, congratulations to him. Let him celebrate how he wants. And people want to say a little bit that and we can, like, roll this champagne video and the celebration didn't really have a lot of oomph. It's so <laughs> freaking funny. This was me in Miami at my bachelor at their, not mine, but the bachelorette party I was at where I was like, I'm just buying all these bottles so everyone else has fun. And I really want to be in bed at 9 p.m. with, a, like, an eye mask on. That's I mean, sort of that's sort of the vibe. You have a history of champagne bottles too, though. <clears throat> I do. I mean, goggles are a great move. In fact, yeah. I'm taking I'm taking notes from you, Joker. I'll say this: people, you know, obviously there are iconic celebrations, and we all remember the Michael Jordans and the Kobe's and the LeBrons and all those guys winning. And like, people are saying this one was lackluster. It was underwhelming. That's BS. This is an iconic celebration that you are going to remember for the rest of your life. And you're going to have callbacks. You're going to say, next time anybody wins something and they don't celebrate or they're not excited, you're going to say, all right, Joker. Okay, Jokic. Like, it's just going to be a joke and it's going to enter the lexicon of, of celebrations as this asymmetrical antithesis of what we're used to. And I think it's iconic and I love it. And it's very, like I said, very <laughs> Eastern European and you love to see it. Uh, so congrats to him, of course, the MVP as you know, probably should have been the, the league MVP, probably the best big man in the history of the sport. We're getting into that conversation. I mean, he's going to keep yeah. going, right? He's not stopping. He's not retired today. So we'll see how that shakes out. We've had a bunch of great NBA players on our show who are talking about that. Yeah, and uh, he is going back to race horses. That's why he wants to get home. Is that what's so going on? 
Apparently, yeah. He said he wants to get back. He has his horse, and yeah. he's preparing for a race, so he wants to get home for they that. They asked him go. about the parade. They're like, are you excited about it? Great reporter, by the way. Whoever they, well, I don't know who it was, but whoever asked him that, because they knew they were going to get some downplayed answer. Yeah. They just wanted the bite. And so, of course, aren't you excited about the parade? And he says, I have to get home. And in that moment, I thought, oh, no, is something going on back at home? Like, is something serious or grave yeah. or, like, something he has to figure out or something he promised, like, a, a little girl, you know, on a pony somewhere, Seinfeld episode, like, like where, like, whatever. And, and that's not the case. He apparently wants to go because he's a big horse guy. So Pony Pony was accurate. Yeah. There's that part. Uh, so congrats, uh, not only to him, not only to Denver Nuggets fans and and Russell Wilson and Sean Payton. You know they're you know they're juiced up by this. You know they're watching like this could be us. This could be us. Who said who said that Denver was having the time of their lives in sports? They all showed up. They're all there. You love to see it. And big shout out to the Nuggets, the Rams, the Avalanche owner, Arsenal guy Stan Kroenke. He is on an unparalleled run right now. Maybe not with Arsenal, but these teams are crushing it. In the last 16 months, he's won the Lombardi. He's got a Stanley Cup in, on his shelf. He's got a National Lacrosse League title, and now a Larry O'Brien trophy. Just unbelievable. We see you. We love you. I have a feeling this one meant a little more to him. His son, Josh, of course, has been running that team for a long time. That's his son, his bloodline, his kid that he watched play at our alma mater, Hamilton and I, uh, used to go to Mizzou. I mean, they've got, you know, Paige. They've got they've got huge connections to that school and the sport of basketball that they're so passionate about. This one meant something to them that's a little extra, I think. Yeah, especially 47 years for that fan base without yeah. a championship. It, it that definitely has to mean a lot. It's exciting. I like it. What do you guys think? At Up and Adam Show. Before we hit vacation here, oh, that's in two <laughs> days. I'm excited. We're going to give you a, a couple of players to keep your eyes on because we're keeping tabs on them. That's right. We're doing all the work. I know you're thinking, oh, who gets to go on vacation for four weeks? We do, but it's not because we didn't finish our homework and turn it in before we left. Now, these are guys who are kind of flying under the radar or rookies who I do think might be... Uh, I'm not going to say might be. These are guys that are going to be a factor this year. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. And we're going to start with the guy that sort of spurred this idea, a friend of the show, Buccaneers running back Rashad White, okay? Leonard Fournette out of the way. The lane is cleared for him to be the guy in Tampa, and we hope he is. Leonard Fournette was supposed to be on our show, and he no-showed. Yeah. He overslept, Leonard Fournette. <laughs> so we're all for Rashad White, okay? Last year, no, we love Leonard. Last year, while playing behind Lenny, he still managed to put up a whopping 770 total yards, 50 catches, three scores. He and I talked about that versatility. We talked about him being a stud in that backfield. And you can imagine how everyone down there is excited to see him be the lead dog. In early April, Jason Light said that Rashad's going to be a stud. And it wasn't just lip service. And you know how I know that? Because the Bucks didn't draft a single running back in the draft a few weeks later, despite plenty of opportunities to pull that trigger. And while there are some doubters out there, fine, I'm sure there are, Rashad's drawing inspo from that Bucks fan base and seems more than ready for the opportunity. Listen to what he said to me a, week, a couple weeks ago. You've been waiting on moments like this your whole life, but everybody got a right to their own opinion. Um, it's just up to me to be that, you know, that guy to back it up and to have, like you said, the fans and people believe in me. Uh, it, it, it makes, you know, it's hard. It's heartwarming for sure. He's one of my favorite guys we've talked to, really. I'm really rooting for him. And I think we were looking at fantasy a couple of weeks ago. He's really under the radar still. Yeah, he's out. He's outside the top twenty-four at running back, so he's like a running back three in fantasy. I in also a, love in by a the PPR way. league. What are we doing? Yeah, like, you gotta grab him. You think Baker or Trask aren't gonna be trying to get him the ball as soon as possible? How's their O line? Yeah, the O line. They've they've yeah. made some adjustments there. Didn't have a great year last year, but um, but yeah, they've they've kind of overhauled it. I like the Bucks colored roses, by the way. You're really going all in on Rashad. I would call them up in Adams colors, and I think they stole it from us, but that's okay. Um, okay, let's move on here. Lions running back. Oh, my gosh. You like this kid? Talk to me. Jameer Gibbs. Tell me. Love him. Why? Versatility. All right. So kind of the same thing as Rashad White. We love that. Okay, so let's do it here. Here's the rookie everybody's so excited about. Explosive as a runner. Ability to line up at receiver. But, I mean, let's not act like Gibbs doesn't possess some of the very same traits here. I mean, look at this Bijan Robinson sort of comparison vibes, right? This isn't the only guy with highlights out of OTAs. Detroit signed David Montgomery. Sure, we love David Montgomery. I wish him the best. So there will be a little competition there for touches in the backfield, but we're going to see Gibbs lining up all over the field just like he did at Bama. He's jumping into this Detroit offense, and already, you know, they're set. They were top five last year as far as the offensive side of things go, so we should see big things out of him this year. And I'd like them to stay on the field as long as possible and give that defense a little rest. Like, let's not roll the defense out there every three seconds, Dan.
defense. That's a good point. Yeah, definitely help that defense out, keeping him off the field. But if it wasn't for Bijan, we'd be talking about Gibbs so much more because I think he's that special of a talent. Yeah. So I love that you're giving him giving him some love here because I think I'm, I'm with you. I think it's going to be a big year. They used him at receiver a ton at Alabama. We talked about Bijan so much, all that footage out of OTAs of them lining him up in the slot. We're going to see the same thing out of Gibbs, and I think it's going to be too special. many Too many guys in that backfield, though, for me to get excited about him? I don't think so because I think he could be out there with Montgomery. You could see him line up in the slot with Montgomery at tailback. We loved Montgomery when he was coming out, remember? Yeah. Mm, now he's got a division with a division rival. Okay, uh, now let's get to a couple of receivers. And this isn't the first time we've mentioned it, but we're just putting our stamp on it as we head out the door for some vacation. It's Calvin Ridley. Out of sight, out of mind, and meaningfully so, but I just want to remind everyone of what he's capable of when he is on the field. I forgot about this a bit until Hamilton put it on my radar during one of his breakdowns. Look at the numbers he put up last year, a full year. That's back in 2020 was the last time we saw that. He was top five in yards, top 10 in touchdowns, and that was in less than a full slate of action. So now you put Ridley in a Doug Peterson visor offense. You know, he's... He's the number one guy. Trevor Lawrence will take another step up, and I think we're going to see a career year out of him. Another receiver I like. We like the young guys. We told you we're going to bring this here with the Vikings rookie, Jordan Addison. Vikings fans, you're insane, first of all. We'll get to that another time, another day. And, and I do love Jackson Smith and Jigba. We are a Seattle Seahawks show record, but we got to give Jordan some love. And yeah, you got Justin Jefferson there, but situation matters so much when you look at which rookie receivers pop up. And he is, because of Justin Jefferson and a whole other bunch of reasons, in the best possible spot to kind of have, what, what kind of year though? Like monster year? What does monster year mean for a rookie? I can see like 1,100, 1,200 yards. Whoa! Yeah, because yeah. They, they throw it around a lot. Will he have a better, will you put your name on him having a better year than Jackson Smith and Jigba because it's a more balanced offense where he's not, you know, yeah, I think, in Seattle? I, I think so because uh, I think statistically when you look at it, the Vikings were the third ha heaviest passing offense last year. And now no Dalvin Cook, you think they're they're probably going to air it out a little bit more, right? I don't um, know. A lot of opportunities, and with all the attention that Justin Jefferson's going to be getting, you got to think he's going to get some favorable matchups. I mean, they're going to pass the ball even more, I feel like, with the Vikings. You get rid of Dalvin Cook, I know he caught the ball a little bit, but I mean, I, having the, the best receiver in the game in Justin Jefferson helps him. So hopefully it frees up Addison to make big plays out the gates, and you're right about that. Okay, the last one. Oh, my gosh. Irv Smith. When he got injured a couple of years ago and he was on the Vikings, more heartbreak yeah. for the Vikings, he's... Uh, we were robbed, I think, of a couple years of greatness. That doesn't matter. Throw that out the window. He's still only 24 years old. Um, you know, he missed the entire 2021 season. He had to complete with looks with Kyle Rudolph and TJ Hawkinson last year. But now it's a bit of a fresh start. And where else to go but Cincinnati? Love it for him, okay? And he's talented, previously underutilized. We can make the argument of freshness, even though he's coming off of an injury-plagued four-year stretch with the Vikings. Look at what Joe Burrow has helped his two predecessors achieve, okay? He loves a tight end. C.J. Uzama put up career highs in catches, yards, touchdowns in one full season with Joey B. Hayden Hurst had a career high in reception despite missing four games. Chase and Higgins demand so much spotlight, not only on yachts with Instagram models, but also on the field between the hash marks. You know, they get lots of shine, and when that happens, the tight end position can grab some balls, can do what they want to do. And Irv Smith Jr. has shown the potential. If he can stay healthy, I think we're going to see him become a major factor, hopefully, in this offense. So these are just some guys that I like for your fantasy, for your, I don't know, for your odds, for your whatever, for you to sound cool at the bar picking up chicks. Hey, Janice, you think, I think Jordan Addison's really going to pop off this year. Want to go on a date? Swipe left this is there you go keep tabs on these guys and who did i miss I, i'm sure you'll let me know okay coming up next on the show the u.s open is in la pga tour star will zelatoris oh that's a nice smile all right let's talk about it with will rising star janice loves the vikings number janice three is receiver. like oh my gosh hey all right greetings from lacc i hear that's off Will Wilshire? Am I wrong? I don't know. I don't know, but it looks beautiful, gorgeous. Welcome to LA. Is that like a Photoshop CGI'd sun? No. There's no world that that's actually the sun. There's no sun in LA. 
Like that is that is an absolute that is a throwback to 1998 or some other time era. Um, hashtag climate change. Okay, next guest today, a young rising star, PGA Tour professional, in just 10 major championship starts. He has six top tens. Wow, he is currently ranked 11th in the world rankings. That's just insane. A total star, Will Zelatoris. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me. It's uh, good catching up. Good catching up. I'm excited to talk about the U.S. Open, everything going on in the golf world. You know. When things from the golf world enter my like Twitter timeline, you know stuff's going crazy. Like you know things are insane because that is not a world that's super familiar to me. So we definitely want to talk about everything. But I know you are dealing with a bit of a back situation. You recently had surgery. How are you feeling? And where are you in your recovery? Tell your fans. Yeah, no, I feel great. Uh, I'm about eight and a half weeks out after my first surgery, and uh, I feel really good. <clears throat> you know, this is the first time in probably about two years. Um, I'm really able to kind of push off my right side a little bit better. And, um, I think it'll be really, it's a really good thing. I think we try to push off surgery for probably seven, eight months. Um, you know, being 26 years old and saying that you're having a back surgery, it's always kind mm. of a, a scary thing, but <clears throat> reality is, I mean, I still have the speed. Um, I'm a little bit ahead of schedule in my rehab, so I feel really good. Now it's just the patience game, which I know I'm, I'm terrible at, so I'm working on it. Do you have, like, a goal in mind of getting back into action or a specific tournament as a goal or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, there's no rush. I, I would say just because, I mean, obviously after our last week that we have, we have no idea what 2024 looks like, and 2023 in the fall um, is supposed to help guys towards 2024. Um I have no idea what's what's going to happen on that end, but I, I'm kind of looking. I'm hoping Vegas would be um, a really okay. good one to come back for. Yeah, I'd say that. I'd say so. A guy, guy off back surgery, getting his like letting loose in Vegas. That sounds great. What are you doing? <laughs> while you know, patience is something I don't have, and I can't imagine being young and wanting to be out there and compete and having the talent to do it and having to be shelved like that. What are you doing in your spare time? I need to know what you're binge watching. I need to know how you're filling your hours. Are you doing crossword puzzles? Are you reorganizing shelves and drawers? What are you doing? Yeah, I am actually in the middle of graduating. Uh, I left school early to turn pro, so I'm finishing that up right now. I think I've, I'm have i taking all of these like career planning classes, which is pretty hilarious. <laughs> um, and I've, I think I've written my resume like four times so, at this point. So it's just, it's just filling in the hours. But um, really, after last week, I, I feel like I've got an unpaid administrative job. I mean, I've spent probably 25 hours on the phone trying to get a better understanding of, you know, what's going on in our yeah. world. So in, in reality, I I was a little bit, you know, my wife and I are going to travel a little bit and go do some fun things um, since I'm really not able to do much golf wise, but I'm able to walk and, and move around. Um, but yeah, after last week, I, uh, I feel like I've got a job. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm just going to tell you, you're doing it wrong, like going to school. And what I, I mean, I wanted to hear like beach. I wanted to hear I'm watching the Sopranos from the beginning, something like that. But you do you. And congratulations. That's that. Hey, I'm up amazing. in the mountains right now. So we're, oh. we're, we're, we're on vacation right now. So we're, we're doing all right. All right. Yeah. I, I love that. Last week, were you doing all right? That's the question here, because, oh, my goodness. One of the biggest stories in, in the world and that will be in sports history, I think, with this, with the PGA Tour and Live Tour teaming up, all of that. What? Take me back to last week first. What was your reaction when you got word that the tours were merging? And then how did you even find out? On Twitter, like everyone else? Well, so I, I was actually in New York on Monday uh, for, I was meeting with a, a partner um, and a couple friends. and. Jimmy Dunn actually tried to call me and I texted him saying, Hey, I'm in the city. would love to catch up. Uh, he's kind of been like a, a pseudo uncle to some of us out there on tour. You know, he's been around for a long time and um, his story is pretty amazing. And um, I totally miss his call. And then I wake up Tuesday morning. He says, Hey, give me a call. I got something to run by. And uh, I think when Jimmy Dunn calls from now on, I think I'm probably going to answer. Um, but uh, you know, I, 2020 hindsight, I look back on this and I could see why this was it, why it happened. I don't agree with how it happened. I don't think anybody on tour agrees with that because when you get an email that says this is your tour and three people basically decide your future, it's kind of hard to accept that. And mm. I think it'll be really interesting to see where things go because we have all this litigation. The litigation has obviously agreed to go to the side, but if we're having antitrust lawsuits between live and the PJ tour, that litigation goes away 
and now we're together. I don't see how the DOJ could be accepting of that. I'm hopeful. I mean, look, I am. I want want what's best for professional golf in general. So wherever that goes, I'm all on board. And I think there's been a lot of learning on my end over the last two years of trying to understand people's opinions and arguments behind it. You know, I think a lot of guys got in hot water for, you know, saying there's a moral argument, which if you start going down the moral argument path, well, if you take a Boeing airplane, you have a Starbucks coffee and you take an Uber, uh, you know, that's, that's mm. PIF and money that's in those companies. So you can't, you know, you can't lose, you can't win that battle. And so I think this is the best way for us going forward. I, but again, the way how this was done can never happen again. It's a really thoughtful, I can, you've done a lot of thinking on this as you sit with your back, you know, doing your career planning. And I really appreciate the <laughs> candor. And I think it's a really thoughtful thing that you're saying. But you were, as I understand it, among many players who turned down the offer up front, right? They, like, they had offered to you before any of this went down to go on live. Where do you stand with yourself now on the decision to sort of remain with the PGA Tour before this all happened? Yeah, you know, I think, I, you know, I'm loyal. I think at this point now, it's all of us are, you know, the guys who met in Delaware, um, a lot of the top players, we just want what's best for the game going forward. And we understand why this was done because it's a unifying factor or it's a unifying deal where you're now going to have everyone back playing again at some point in time. We don't know when that would be, but, you know, you can't tell these guys that, you know, hey, you can't come back and play the PGA Tour ever. That, that's just not a possibility that can't happen um and so i for me and being some of the top guys that turned down the money mm -hmm. um i'm actually okay with it i mean i know that the you know freddie couples came out and you know he <laughs> did basically leaked my my offer that i had but it was over six years and then you run it through and i'm like man i had a great 2022 and you know life was really good and having to go through what those guys went through to be at live and then now not even knowing what your future is in 2024. I, I don't regret my decision one bit, you know, cause in 2024, we don't know what our landscape is going to look like. We don't know if these guys are going to come back. We don't know if they're going to have suspensions. We don't know if they're going to, they're going to have fines. We don't even know if this deal is going to go through uh, because of the DOJ. So to be honest, I have more questions than I have answers right now. And that's even from, you know, being around a lot of these top guys that are on the front lines with it. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's 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 a pretty wild time to be sitting here and thinking, you know, at 26 that, you know, I, I've told people where they, they've asked me, you know, man, what do you think about this? I'm like, oh, you heard about it. You know, it's like I'm just so stuck in my own world, not even mm. thinking about you know the, the quote unquote merger. Um, so it's it's like I said, I think in the long run, this is going to be good for us. But there's so much work to be done. And if you ask me what 24, what 2024 is going to look like. Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, there's so much uncertainty. And yeah, we all heard about it, Will. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> heard about it. I got to ask you, though, you know, I, I covered the NFL mostly in its 32 teams, and locker rooms are very important. Your world is very different. Y'all are all individuals doing your thing, but you do coexist. There's locker rooms, there's photo ops, there's meetings, there's press, there's all of this. Have you thought about or do you know what it's going to look like when all of you come together? I think it, like I said, I think having, it's going to have a lot of eyeballs for one, which is really good for us. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that went that a lot of us on the tour are still very close friends with, you know, like Harold Varner is one of the greatest guys on earth. I love that guy. I mean, what he's doing at ECU right now, uh, or that he announced yesterday is just incredible. Um, you know, there's a lot, you know, Sebastian Munoz is one of my best friends. And so, you know, like, I miss those guys. I miss seeing them. I miss playing practice rounds with them. But, you know, and it's just like I told them, I said, look, I've got no problem with you going to live. I just want to make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, you know, I get it that you're going to be going for, you know, a lot of guaranteed money, but we just don't know. I mean, you're, you're partnering with somebody that we don't know and you quite frankly don't really know either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun having the guys back at some point, whenever that may be. Um, you know, but I think, uh, you know, the majors have been pretty, I think the media has been really wanting to have this live versus PJ tour battle. 
And in reality, you know, when it comes down to the majors, you know, Brooke, Brooks winning, I think people really wanted to have that live PGA tour. Come on, Rory, come on, Brooks. And in reality, you know, we're all, we all play golf. We've all known each other for, you know, the better part of 15, 20 years. So, you know, I think on the personal side, you know, there's maybe a few guys that maybe have some problems with some of the guys and I completely get it. Um, but at the end of the day, my job is to go out there and play the best golf I can and get the ball in the hole as fast as I can and hopefully beat those guys. You don't mind those guys? You don't, you don't have like a chip on your shoulder? I would have a tough time. I would be like 50 <laughs> million bajillion, huh? Phil's doing his dances and like the eyeball emote. Like that's not going to put a little, maybe even in a good way, a little something extra on you? Come on. I think the part when the, I think when everybody was celebrating the deal, I think the details were so vague mm -hmm. and so unknown that it was just thought that this was a merger and they were coming back. But then once the details came out of, it's not that simple, but we also don't know if this framework agreement is going to work. Um, I think to me, that's where I'm like, I, I wish I had answers for you. I wish I had, yeah. you know, some headline answer of, Hey, this is what's going to happen. But I, who knows, I may give you an answer today and I might have a complete 180 tomorrow. I, I really don't know. And you're allowed. Give them hell. <laughs> okay, listen, <laughs> listen, you talked about all those eyeballs on, on all the guys when they're together. That happens this week. It's a big week in golf. U.S. Mm -hmm. Open here in L.A. And uh, they say it's not officially U.S. Open week until you see, you know, these videos of the rough. So here they are. It doesn't, uh, you know, that doesn't just look, you know, what do you think of this? Yeah, I mean, this is stereotypical U.S. Open. It's interesting because we haven't had a U.S. Open on Bermuda Rough, and, you know, we get lies like that. It's just a total guess. I mean, you have no idea if that ball is going to come out four feet in front of you or 45 feet in front of you. So have fun, boys. I'm looking forward to watching the mayhem. I mean, you've won on this course, though, Will, right? This yeah, is I, the... love, I love this golf course. What were you, 12 years this... old, 2017? <laughs> the Walker Cup squad? What's going on? You, Scotty, Scheffler, Colin Marawa Marawaka. Tell us about this. How difficult is this course? Good luck, boys. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty, it's going to be a very different experience for the U.S. Open this year because there's so many different ways you can set up this golf course. I mean, when I played in 2017, I think number seven played as a par three and a par four. Uh, number one, we teed off the putting green one day to move it as far back as possible, like right in front of the clubhouse, essentially. Um, you know, was it 11 played at 300 yards as a par three? And then we played 15, or is it 15 or 14 at 76 yards as a par three? So you can do so many things to this golf course that it really is kind of up to what the USGA wants to do with it. Um, take that how you want it, I guess. But I, I really do love the aspect of you, you can make all these holes play completely different depending on the day. And so I think um, these guys are going to be in for a test. I think the person who's kind of most malleable and just accepting of, okay, the, we're playing a 300-yard par three. This hole, even though it has a par three on it, this is like a par 3.5. Yeah. And if I just make a couple of pars over the next – four days I'm playing I'm tying the field and so U.S. Open par is always irrelevant but one day that hole could be par three and a half and the next day you might have a, a nine iron in and it's uh, you might have a birdie look so the guys that uh, I think just go out and hit the best shots they possibly can and just be patient and know that they're going to make bogeys at some point but it'll make sure no doubles that's just the recipe and Brooks did it amazingly at Oak Hill I okay. mean he, he watched his Sunday round it was so boring but it was so good. I mean, he hit four, I think he hit like four iron shots within six feet and then he just lagged everything else close. And it was just like, you can't beat that. When yeah. you have a lead in a major, it's really hard to make mistakes when you do what he did. I understood about 20% of what you just said. It's literally like you're speaking another language, but every dad in here is geeking out like, yeah, blah, blah, birdie, maybe. <laughs> I heard malleable. So give me, you know, who is that? I'm going to just put you on the spot. Who conquers this course and wins this weekend? I... I mean, I think it's going to be one of the big names. I know that that's just a, you know, ha ha great answer, but I think the guys, you know, it's a big boy golf course. It is, it's about 7,600 yards, I think is what it is. Okay. Um, and so, you know, the guys who hit it over 300, probably I'm looking at the guys, you know, like a Rom, like a Brooks, like a Rory, 
you know, these guys that have the total package, which you need to win a U.S. Open, but distance is huge at this venue especially. You said Brooks twice, so I think Brooks is the guy I'm going to go for. Okay. <laughs> uh, I hear you're a Golden I know Nuggets won last night, but you're a Golden State Warriors fan. Uh, we all saw yeah. this. You yell yeah, Steve, Steph Curry's mantra, what are they going to say now during your victory round, uh, your win at FedEx St. Jude Championship. That was your first tour win. So take me back, you know, just because we're celebrating all things NBA today. You, you, you know, you make it through that putt, you hoist that trophy. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I, I mean, what a wild time. You know, it was actually my first <laughs> on the bag with, with Joel. Um, Woo! Yeah, I know, it was pretty wild. I, uh, I knew that I was playing some really nice golf, got off to a hot start, 33 in a row, and then uh, made a really great up and down on 18 to get into the playoff. And then uh, I got a, a bounce from the gods for my ball to stay up and, you know, kind of create a match play situation on that par three. Um, after, you know, really, Sep had this exact same shot. His just happened to kick in the water, and then we have a little bit of a match play mentality from there. Um, so pretty amazing time, and um, I'm looking forward to going out and repeating it at some point. I love that. Now, did Happy Gilmore tweet you after that win? He so he's yeah he um, he actually texted me after what? the Masters a couple of years ago, and um, it's so funny reading it because he texted me the day I actually got engaged, and I said, "Hey, thank you for the text message." really means a lot and um you know i just got engaged today just reading his text message of oh you got it you've got it all going on right now man like so happy for it and i could just hear his voice like as like as i'm reading the text message um but he's i mean the guy's he's super super nice and um how do you I'm know him how do you know him i think because of the masters a few yeah. years ago people thought i looked like happy gilmore's you caddy, do. which i yeah, the long hair. Yeah, back then when I had the long hair and all that, I, I definitely do. But I get I get all the comments all the time about, you know, you know, where are you going with those clubs, punk? You know, all the great lines out of it when I'm out on the golf course. And so um, but he got a hold of me somehow, I think, through the tour. And he's shot me a couple texts after. Have you um, golfed with him? Moments. No, I've never met him. Let's I, go. You know, Let's go. So I know I'd love to. I'd love to. Don't, I know heal, I'm up. Like, Don't heal up for your career, or your millions, or your whatever. Heal up so you can, you know, get in a foursome with Adam Sandler, David Spade, and Chris Rock. Like, that's what we're talking oh about. God. Can you imagine? There's no amount of money in the world. That, I mean, there, I would pay so much money for that <laughs> round, but I swear I'd, I wouldn't be able to focus. Yeah. yeah. Probably the first round I've ever played, and I'd be totally okay with it. Yeah, you should have taken that live money. Kidding! Okay, the NBA is <laughs> Listen, you, we mentioned Steph Curry, I'm sure you'd love to golf with him. I don't know if you've met him or not, but the, the whole match thing is happening, and it's very exciting. Yeah. Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, my world, your world, let's go. It's June 29th. I assume you'll take Team Warriors to win, correct? I kind of have to. Otherwise, uh, I mean, I might look like a bandwagoner or something like that. I already get enough crap for being in, living in Texas and being a yeah. Golden State Warriors fan. But yeah, I'm born over there. So, I, you know, I, that's still kind of home for me. But I got a root for my guy. The guy's been so, I mean, this guy's my hero. Yeah. And you, I mean, just before we let you go, NFL, are we, do we have a team? Are we a Cowboys guy? Are we a fantasy yeah, football Yeah, I'm a junkie? Cowboys guy. I mean, I know the Warriors have had a nice run, but I got to, I got to balance out the misery somehow. So. <laughs> I love it. All right. We appreciate it. You're amazing. We, I love the explanations. I feel a lot smarter and dumber all at the same time. So uh, it's very good. It's a little Happy Madison sort of vibe that I'm feeling. We appreciate you, Will Zalatoris. Good luck in your recovery. And, uh, and thanks for the time. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Have a good one. Thank you. Enjoy the mountains. That's like where I want to live and be for the rest of my days. All right. We'll be back. We've got more. We'll hop back to the NFL. Little NBA. Do not miss it. Up. Successful visit with the Titans. Okay, yeah, I got wine and dine, caviar, roses, private jet, the whole thing, mock-ups of him in Titans jerseys. Both sides remain in contact. Nuke expected to visit the Patriots, though, so that is what is going on. Um, there's some people out there, I'm listening to some fans some analysts, some Twitter analysts saying that he maybe is not as dominant as he once was. So I wanted to bring in Hamilton. I flew him all the way in for this edition of Hammer Time to break it down. Okay, okay, what are you seeing when you, my friend, look at DeAndre on the tape, for real? Yeah, so I don't see any drop off really whatsoever. Okay. We know speed wasn't really ever his game. 
and how he created separation. So when you look at the tape, you still see all of the traits that have made him so successful throughout his entire career. Let's go! Here he is up at the top of the screen. One of the things you look for to see if there's a decline, how is he doing against press coverage? Here he is third and four against the number one defense in the NFL, right? The 49ers. Look at how he gets off that line of scrimmage. He gets his leverage without getting pushed to the sideline. And he's always been so great at this, that back shoulder throw. He makes that eye contact with Colt McCoy. The body control to get himself turned, track that ball, and then get the feed in. We know from Nate Burleson, our buddy, he's as good with the toe drag swag as anybody. Shout out, Nate! Makes it look easy there. And then you'll see him here moved inside in the slot against zone coverage. This is where you can move him, get him some favorable matchups still. Um, and you'll see it here. He gets into that window. The safety has him lined up here for a big shot. There is no reason why he should be able to break out of this, and especially if he's declining. There's no way he, he spins out of this and takes it for a touchdown, right? Right. Wrong. Oh, I was just videotaping you. <laughs> this looks sick. Great. But yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Board. You're you still looked, seeing... It looked great. Go ahead. You're Go. seeing all the things from him that we've seen throughout his entire career. We saw it all on tape last year. You can't expect him to be what he was never, right? If he was never the speed guy, then why would that? It's just people exactly. trying to sort of tear him apart. And he did average, we have some numbers here, 95.7 yards per game before Kyler Murray got hurt last year. Guess what? That's the second highest average in his entire 10-year stretch of his career. So, listen, I don't get the narrative. He's still playing at a high level. I've said this to you all along, Hammer. I know you're going to look at the tape. There's, something, there's something else going on. There's something else going on with D-Hop that we are not – figured out yet but take me to more tape on him and how you're viewing him yeah and of course you know we looked at the him getting off of press coverage yes. we looked at the yards after the catch but he's still got this too you're gonna see here down in the red zone they're stacking him with zach Ertz. he's always been such a great red zone weapon and you'll see there that's all pro safety one of the most physical safeties in the game harrison smith lined up on him he gets his hands on him how does he beat these type of physical plays again wow. especially as the speed starts to decline a little bit he sheds him easily and then he still has the best hands in the entire game just out, stab, reaches up and stabs that thing one-handed for the touchdown those hands aren't going anywhere i don't care how old he gets. he's always going to be able to make catches like this you put the ball anywhere near him he's coming down with it. hey brian you want this guy in the afc east going against your buffalo bills let's go Bills. you Mafia. do oh, i don't <laughs> Oof, he said he looks scared he still got it yeah he definitely does brian wants that smoke Brian yeah. thinks the Buffalo Bills are, yeah. I saw I Stephon Diggs was doing quite a beautiful spread in some magazine again. You can come to Orchard Park. You think, he's, <laughs> you think Stephon Diggs is, uh, is I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay, what else we got going on? I mean, we have to think about, you know, we don't know where he'll be playing yet, but the, it all figures itself out in the FanDuel Sportsbook. And, you know, there's so much fun stuff at the Sportsbook. Guys, it's crazy. He's plus 4,500 to lead the league in receiving, even though we don't know where he's going to be. Yeah. That's ahead of, like, Christian Watson, or no, the same, rather, and Mike Williams, guys who we know where they are and they've got great quarterback play behind guys like Chris Olave and Jerry Judy where there are quarterback questions. Uh, is that for pretty good value? You have to think it is because, again, there's still a chance he ends up with Patrick Mahomes, right? So uh, if he ends up with a Mahomes, that number is going to change pretty dramatically and you're not getting those odds. So now is an interesting time to get in on him if you are still a believer in what he's able to do on the field, which I showed. He hasn't lost a step at all. It's going to be, it's going to all depend on the landing spot, right? If he ends up in Tennessee, probably not leading the league in receiving. But if he ends up in Kansas City, he's going to have a great shot. Diop was, or not Diop, D uh, Butler was hilarious yesterday. I'm like, where he's like, don't go to either. Don't go to Tennessee. Don't go to the Patriots. Now, Kansas City would be nice. But you heard me last week. Tell me if you think I'm wrong about, they don't, not that they don't need him, but like, they're okay. They've yeah. got the chemistry. Is he going to muck with that would be the question. Where do you want to see DeAndre go? I mean, I'd love to see him in New England. I think just make that AFC East as exciting so as possible. So does Brian, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it, just seeing that AFC East be loaded, that gives the Patriots a legitimate shot to, to push those other teams. And it's going to be... It's going to be a headache trying to figure out who wins that division and who finishes in last. Kind of like how we were with the AFC West going into last year. I think that, yeah. that division is going to be going to be awesome to try to have to sort through and figure out. Go grab the value. Plus 4,500 to lead the league in receiving. Again, same as Christian Watson and Mike Williams behind guys like Olave, behind guys that have a lot more quarterback questions despite not knowing the destination because at worst he ends up with Bill Belichick where they need a true number one. At, bat, <laughs> you know, at best he's catching balls from Patrick Mahomes in some theater coming near you. So uh, enjoy that. How about me telling Wilt he should have taken the live money so he could golf <laughs> with Adam Sandler? <laughs> 
He enjoyed that. He did he? Okay, <laughs> coming up. <laughs> but you know what I mean? He's yeah. gotta have a little something extra. Yeah. A little something extra for them. Uh, we love Ngakwe. We always have. 2017, you almost won the AFC Championship game. Let's go. Yearning for earnings. We're gonna swipe left and swap right for Yannick. Miles Jack wasn't dead. We're not just a football show. We're turning dingers into dollars, baby. All baseball season long with Dinger Tuesdays on FanDuel. Uh, Ellie? Ellie, he's got a good shot. Ellie. I had Bo Bichette last week and he hit one, so. I don't know how you Get have on. the frickin' time. America's number one sports book. Just bet $25 or more on any player to hit a home run and get $5 in bonus bets for every home or hit by either team. That's really why Hamilton's here, because he it's just Dinger wants Tuesday. to talk about Dinger Tuesday. <laughs> and if you needed another reason to root for your favorite players to go yard, download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You can get it on all the MLB action today. My brewers are in trouble. That's what I... <laughs> I'm what, not kidding. What are you I love it because the Yelich is just stinking up. <laughs> when did this happen? I have to because I listen to I listen to most a lot of the Brewers games on on the app and I'm listening to Bob Euchre who I love and I love listening at the local dairy farm and the ice cream and the Scots lawn care you, you stuff. You ask me where I have the time for my fantasy baseball team. Well, you're listening to Brewers. I do games it for love. I do it for love. I listen to these the Brewers broadcasts and they're not doing great. But the Cardinals aren't doing much. You know, this is the time of year the Cardinals awake and they come and they take it. They're yeah. not doing that right now, huh? They're having a rough time. Yeah. I mean, you grew up a Cubs fan. You worked for the Cardinals. <laughs> now you're listening to Brewers games. It's the biggest it's... heel turn ever. Yeah. Like, Bears fans want to be mad about the Bengals. How about you be mad that I went and got paid and then got a, I, have, I literally have a world championship ring from the Cardinals. No one's mad about that in Chicago. <laughs> and then you got to throw out a first pitch at a Cubs game yeah. after that. That's so. called, um, that's called, a master class. Uh, Richard just said, Richard just called my ear, uh, where's that ring right now? Kali. Oh boy. No one knows. I have no <laughs> idea. Chicago probably hanging around just to put, just to rub it into Chicago. That ring's sitting there in your city limits somewhere. It's at my mom's house, I'm sure. By the way, it wasn't like the Matt Holiday, Adam Wainwright, Chris Carpenter sparkler, okay? It was definitely you know, the lower, the lower grade ones. They have different, you know, yeah. different classes. They've got the A team. I think I was like an, you know, like the, the, an F class. Like it's not, it's not that nice. It is about the size of the ring. <laughs> That's what Richard's arguing to me in my ear. Ooh, okay. Um, Should have taken the live money. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Richard, uh, coming from Richard, the guy that's going to buy his wife socks from the Kentucky Derby, you know. Listen, uh, Father's uh, Day is coming up. And we are, by the way, we have a primer for everybody out there for Father's Day. And we are going to tell you what you should buy, moms, wives, partners, and kids, and what you shouldn't buy. And so we're going to do all of that. Maybe you should buy lasers. The, the, the. The most manipulative list we've ever talked about, first of all. But yeah, the lasers. Well, I think Can any, you tell people about the lasers? I think any gift that you get for somebody for Father's Day should really be for you. And I'm not saying you get them something that you would use. You get them something that takes something off your plate and you do it via what he's calling manipulation, but what I'm calling just good strategy and a partnership. Yeah, you have a great way of twisting things to make them yeah, sound we have better a big, than they are. We have a, like, yeah. a big FanDuel photo shoot today, everybody, and I know we have to take a break here, but I decided because of my excellent time management skills that I would go do, you know, like lasers, like when you get a little <laughs> up there in the old age, you want to get, you know, you want to keep yeah, it nice. Yeah, sure, lasers. Everybody keep it knows nice exactly here. what I got three about. lasers yesterday. I literally have makeup on my face, guys. It's like what a mortician would do in my girl to make sure that, you know, you're, you're looking okay. I have like eight pounds of makeup on my face, but we're doing this photo shoot, baby. We're ready. Are you part of it somehow? Can we get uh, some pictures? I am. Ah, exciting! <laughs> we'll be back after this. Oh, I'm sorry to everyone watching, but that was, that was an uncalled for. Lasers. Lasers. Three of them, and then needles under my face. <laughs> So a lot of free agents on the market. Our producers have been helping them uh, over the past couple of weeks because, Eric, that's what you, your calling in life was to find free agents. Where's Eric? Yeah, there he is. Eric, <laughs> to find free agents, love. Yeah, okay. We're doing it for love. Yeah, man, I'm, I mean, I'm a giving heart. I like to help people out. Me and Marissa teamed up on this to just make some NFL free agents look a little more appealing. Uh, so we created an app and it's called Yearning for Earnings. Terrible name, but it's a, you know, it's a work. We, before we take this out to try to get investors, we gotta work on that, but what do you got? All right, today we have NFL free agent Yannick Ngakwe. Ooh, Versace, Versace, Versace. Let's get into his earnings profile. All right, there he is. 
I'm loving this confident lean on the Camel Ferrari, Agreed. by the way. Agreed. That's some drip right there. Oh, what? This? My Camel Ferrari? My Camel Ferrari? What? This whole thing? Oh, I guess this is where I'm sitting. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like it. So he's 28 years old. He's 6'2". He's from Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. He's an edge rusher. And uh, he's from the University of Maryland. So go Terps, right? Go Terps. Let's get into his prompts. The way I win you over. I've had at least eight sacks in all of my seven seasons in the NFL. I'm a QB seeking missile, <laughs> shooting daggers at potential match. Let's get to that next prompt. My greatest weakness, I have some issues. As a run defender, I'm just being real. Uh -huh. Of the 31 edge guys in the league, I had the worst PFF run defensive grade at 43.7. I'm built for speed, not comfort. All right, let's get to his last prompt here. My model in life is this. And I think we have a video, let's click on it. I don't quit. I don't quit. I don't quit. I don't quit. I love that. I don't quit. Okay, it sounds like he doesn't quit. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like it. He's in it to win it. All right, here's some potential teams. Uh, we got the Browns okay. circling back from our mutual interest in 2020. Jags, two weeks. You and me, England, <laughs> on us. Are you in? I've gotten a DM like that before. Panthers, right is right. Reich is Reich. And then we have the Bears. Our stadium looks like a spaceship. Want to go to outer space? No. Oh, I'm loving it. All right, let's drop into the DMs and see what we got here. Yeah. All right, so the first DM here, I think we got it from uh, the Bears, right? Oh, the outer space one? Okay. Bears, we're looking for someone to put the suite in Sweet Home Chicago. Matt Eberflus is all over the market right now and looking to add some assets <laughs> to his defense. Okay, do you hear that? Whoosh, whoosh. Oh, what's that noise? Just the Windy City knocking at your door. Guys, bears are coming in hot. What do we yeah. think? Is this a good la landing spot for them? Well, if you want money and you want to go with the guy that's got the financial security, then you go to Chicago. I mean, the days of Khalil Mack, Robert Quinn are over. The Bears had just 20 sacks last year as an entire team, so that's not great. They need him, and they can afford him. They got all the dough. So uh, it's a pretty good match. All right. I'd like it, and I love him. I love I love him. What else you got? All right, let's get into the Jaguars' yeah. DNs real quick. If I could turn back time, yeah. if I could find a way to take you back the old Jaguar way, but it'll be better this time, I swear. We've got the hottest it couple in Trevor and Doug. We've moved up to prime time. Did I already mention that free two-week trip to England? Yeah, baby. Okay, they're coming off a little nerdy, if you ask me. What are we thinking, Hamilton? I mean, that's an awful lot of sweet talk they're giving to somebody who's just gonna be in the rotation. Um, but if that's the role that Unique is willing to accept to be that situational pass rusher, I love the fit. I love seeing him come back home, and I think there's still a lot to his game. None of this matters. As a pass rusher. You Here picked Bam, first of all, to hit the first shot last night, and you won with the finals. Number two, go you're Brewers. Singing now? If go I Brewers. could turn back time. Yeah. Cedar Crest.